The last time we chatted, we were talking about the boss, Bruce Springsteen, down on the river here, calling off a safari because he had just worked out that a python was a snake, right? Okay. So anyway, I want to tell you about this property. Our estate is on the periphery of Harare. And we are an absolute paradise for pythons. There are copies, rocky outcrops. There are streams, dams. It's, it's, we're rich with wildlife and food. Impala, young impala, old impala, game birds, everything. We have this ideal, wonderful, humid condition and environment for pythons to live in. And they proliferate. We catch four to five pythons a year. All of those pythons that we catch are in excess of 10 feet. And the maximum size we've caught is a 16-footer. And the reason we catch these pythons is because if we don't, they move into the urban areas. They pursue dogs, cats, chickens, ducks. They go in there, they get the scent. A python can smell the scent of a, of a, of a duck, for example, across a lake. And will swim that lake to get to that duck. Anyway, we want to stop these poor pythons going into the urban areas, taking ducks and being killed by people in the urban areas. So we capture them and we translocate them to various national parks. Umfarudzi National Park, Chivu National Park, whichever it is. We do this in conjunction with the Department of National Parks and Wildlife in Zimbabwe. During our last rainy season, 14 months ago, I went to examine my rare violets growing beneath the Brachistesia or Masasa trees. And this is what I found. That's a big pipe. He's a big guy. <laughs> but we have some monster snakes here, and they're a problem for us. They not only do they uh, are they a threat to kids, children, etc., who are playing, but we've lost one dog to a python. A second dog, uh, Ben's dog Chocho, was attacked two years ago on New Year's Day. Massive bite. When a python wants to catch something, it strikes and bites. It has a vicious bite, big curved teeth. And having bitten, stunned at the same time, it quickly throws itself around the animal and then starts to constrict it. Every breath out that that takes, that little impala, it crushes it, or the dog. We were lucky that the other dogs attacked the python and eventually it released Ben's dog. We've had one come into the house, right into the house, chasing a Daxi, chasing little Patrick's Daxi when Patrick was nine years old. Chase, and his Daxi's name was Ant. Chased Ant in. I was working nine o'clock at night. Kacha said to me, darling, look, there's a python. And I turned around. Sure enough, there was a python chasing the Daxi. Anyway, caught that one. <laughs> Translocated it, but I got to tell you what Patrick did. Patrick was unimpressed with this, and Patrick is a great snake catcher, by the way. But unimpressed, loves his dog Ant, his little sausage dog. So he went into the kitchen, took a soup ladle, went into the workshops, asked the supervisor to cut the handle off, said a cap. All right, then he soldered nails all over the cap like this, and he put a rubber band around the bottom of this cap with the big spikes and it was known as Ant's anti-python helmet and every time Ant <laughs> went on safari with Patrick he had to wear his anti-python helmet all right that's how much pythons have affected our lives but what I want to say though is that the big thing here with the python is they're very revered by the local people. They are the spirit. They carry the spirit of, of the ancestors. And they are protected by culture and custom. And that's a very, very good thing to know. And the only time a python can come to any harm is if it's eating someone's livestock. Otherwise, they are revered.
So all in all, this wonderful reptile, big old reptile, has given us a huge amount of activity, a big buzz here, and that's it. What I want to say to you is thank you, stay safe, stay isolated, and Zimbabwe sends you lots of love. Mwah.